morning. Good morning. How are you? Fine. Come with me, please. Just to repeat, candidate number six. Right. We'll just start over here. This table of four, they have ordered a bottle of Caudrieux 2020 by Yves Cuyon. Could you please serve it to them? You will have six minutes for this. <coughs> this table of four have ordered a bottle of Caudrieux 2020 by Yves Cuyon. Could you please serve it to them? You have six minutes. Time starts now. Hello, my name is Jacob, I'll be your sommelier. Uh, I'm happy uh, to open for you a bottle you choose. Uh, it's a Contrier from IFKIR 2020. I would like to ask you who will taste the wine? I will taste it. You're responsible for your Thank you. Let me prepare the stuff. Please. So excuse me, uh, I have to apologize, it's a mistake of our restaurant, uh, but from Yves Kieron we have, uh, we don't have country actually. There are some of us and varieties, there are white ones from the Northern Rhone as well, but they're different than, uh, than the Union of course. Uh, or we have also the Red Sierra there. So uh, if I could suggest one of those, I would be very happy. Of course, it will be some gift from the kitchen that uh, we probably forgot to, have to order it. Uh, it could happen now with the peak season, so I'm so sorry for that. So uh, would you like to? I will follow your recommendation. Okay, perfect. Okay. So my choice for you, it's a Marsan 2020 from Yves Kieron, La Vigne de Côte. I choose this because uh, Marsan, it's a little bit more fatty than a Roussan grape. And uh, for me, it's a little bit uh, closer to the style, uh, to famous Condrillo of Yves Kieron, of course. So uh, that's the explanation of my choice. And uh, I think it could be served with almost the same food, the similar, the rich dishes of, uh, for example, lobster, or the creamy sauces. The cork is fine. Would you like to check it? Yeah, please. Here we are. I will check the wine if it's fine, but the cork looks gorgeous. It's excellent. It's a beautiful, very vivid. There is the richness uh, I was speaking about. There is a fresh acidity, so the wine is not dull. It's very about uh, the peachy tones, uh, tangerines. I think that's uh, the Marsan that should be. Bucket. I remove my stuff. And uh, I hope that you will enjoy this nice wine, as I said, could be paired with uh, the rich food because of, of the fattiness. And uh, just one information, Contrier is a famous appellation of the Northern Rome. This one, it's uh, actually not because Yves Kieron is made it uh, in the Northern Rome, but uh, Marsan Roussan is not allowed uh, to be put into Contrier and the vineyards on the Let's say outskirt of this. Would you like to keep the cork on the table, sir? As you wait, yeah. So, well, if you're happy because we choose one of the best wines on our wine list, if Kieran, it's a really, really famous, famous stuff. So, uh, 
yeah, it's a rich and nice to start a, a lunch with uh, so nice bottle like this. And uh, if you want to continue, we have a Syrah there, so it could be a nice step, so it's up to you. And uh, I will be happy to help you and to assist you with uh, any of your choices. Thank you. If you're happy, yeah. we can yeah. we can move on. Yeah. Okay. If you're happy, we're happy. <laughs> At least while we're here. So for the next task, we would like you to make a full organoleptic tasting of this wine. You will have four minutes for this. Please make a full organoleptic tasting of this wine. You have four minutes. Time starts now. So the color and appearance of the wine is very lively, very vivid. It's a bit, uh, bit dull, but it's uh, typical. Uh, there is no sediment, no CO2. It's a bit typical for the red wines. Uh, it's a high intensity of uh, the red ink color uh, with uh, a very thin uh, ruby rim, so it looks that uh, the wine is uh, very youthful because of the color, and the viscosity uh, should be judged as uh, for sure uh, a high, and it's a bit stained in the glass. In aroma, the wine is clean. Uh, in appearance, it's clean. It's, in the aroma, it's clean. Sorry, uh, it's medium plus in intensity of the aroma. It's uh, also very vivid, very youthful. Uh, it's very fresh, uh, very straightforward, uh, so uh, it looks that it's uh, that it's uh, young. And uh, the dominant tones, uh, we can feel a lot of uh, ripe black cherries, a lot of, a lot of uh, ripe plums. There is a very nice uh, touch of the mood berries, and of course there is uh, a part of uh, the earthiness, uh, tobacco leaves, or uh, the woody tones that uh, probably shows uh, the oak aging uh, of uh, this wine. It should be uh, up to three years of age. It's a very nice, intensive aroma, very elegant. On the palate, the wine is clean. It's bone dry, there is no residual sugar. Uh, it's medium plus in acidity. It's very fresh for the red wine. And there is also medium plus of the tannins. Uh, they are very light and very pleasant, but uh, they are, uh, you can feel them uh, on, the, on the back of the tongue. Uh, so uh, the wine is a little bit, uh, warmer in a, in a character, so I think we are uh, in a bit higher alcohol, could be around 13.5%, uh, and it has a very nice uh, full body, uh, which is uh, supported by, by the great structure of minerality and tannins uh, that makes for this wine a very, very long aftertaste. I think it's a great balanced wine of uh, superior quality, and uh, also in the palette we have a lot of uh, those smoky, oaky, woody, leathery tones. Uh, so the uh, palette confirms uh, the nose, uh, it was oak aged. But the main character, it's more about ripe black currant, like ripe black berries. Uh, there is a bit of plummy jam. And uh, also uh, there is uh, a touch of the sour cherries on the end. Uh, I think uh, because of those characteristics, uh, we are in a old world wine. We are on a wine which comes from uh, the maritime or Atlantic climate, uh, a little bit warmer. Uh, we are in a wine that was oak aged uh, and it's uh, up to three years of age. And I think uh, we are thinking about the Kive, there is not so many single varietal tones. So it could be a Cabernet Sauvignon Merlot blend from, uh, from Bordeaux, or it could be a Sangiovese blend from Tuscany, like super Toscan stuff. Uh, my final conclusion for this wine, we are in Bordeaux. This is a 2000. This is a 2000. Uh, a 17 vintage. Uh, this is Cru uh, Classe from Medoc, and uh, this is uh, from uh, Mulis and Listrac area. And I think this is a Chateau La Lagune. Uh, so the wine based on the Cabernet Sauvignon with a uh, little bit of the Merlot.
time. Thank you very much. Now we would like you, ready? Now we would like you to advise your manager, Mr. Poussier, whether you would buy this wine or not, and why. You have one minute for this. Uh, I would like uh, to convince you to buy the wine, uh, because uh, Bordeaux is a famous area, it has a famous name, and I think a lot of people still asking for Bordeaux, even they don't know about the wine, but the name is very, very powerful. Uh, this is an except exceptionality for me, uh, because Chateau La Laguna is uh, in the spotlight in Tunis district. Uh, a lot of chateaus are in uh, Poyac, uh, in Marcos, and Vienne. But the uh, country passes from Moulis and this there are uh, just a few, and uh, La Laguna is uh, like a superstar of it. And for me, the wine is uh, very young, very youthful, and there is a potential for aging. I think we could keep it for five to ten years, so it could be also the investition for, uh, for the future. Of course, we are not to resell the wine, but uh, the wine could stay in the cellar and uh, we can sell the wine uh, in years, maybe for a higher price. So for me, there is a big name, there is uh, a great quality, big potential, not losing the money. So uh, it's a food-friendly wine, so we can use it in the menu Bye. as well. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Now, we would like you to identify these four sparkling wines and name the method of production for each one. You will have five minutes. Please identify these four sparkling wines and name the method of production for each one. You have five minutes. Factory start. Wine number one, made from Aguera. Uh, this is a Prosecco, it's a Charmant method, uh, around uh, three months uh, on the yeast in uh, stainless steel tanks. level of the wine uh, for me it's uh, well Prosecco, Valdobbiade uh, and Conegliano Superiore. So Italian Veneto, uh, Veneto region. Well for wine number two, uh, it's uh, from Bracchetto uh, uh, variety. Uh, the wine comes from Piemonte, and it's a DOCG uh, Bracchetto d'Aqui. It's a sweet, uh, sparkling wine. And it's made by Metal Dances now. Uh, both wines, uh, like Prosecco, like Bracchetto d'Aqui. Uh, Prosecco is a non-vintage Bracchetto d'Aqui, it's a young vintage, like uh, 2020. Continue with wine number four. Wine number four uh, was made by traditional method, uh, method uh, uh, Champenois. And I think uh, this is a blend of uh, Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, Meunier. Uh, it was aged on this in a bottle uh, for a nice period, uh, for let's say four years. And this is a non vintage Champagne. Wine number three, it's a also a traditional method, sparkling production. Uh, it's a little bit more ripe uh, than the champagne. So probably uh, we are here in the Cava region. Uh, this is uh, extra brut wine. The champagne was pretty, this is an extra brut uh, Cava made from uh, Macabeo and Sherello grape. Uh, it was uh, 18 months uh, on the lease, probably a uh, traditional method, and it comes from uh, Benedis area. Regarding the producers, uh, number one could be Villa Sandi, number two, uh, Braida, number three, uh, it could be uh, 
codon mu. Number four. This is my solution. It's not. Uh, let's say that's. some lunch. Now we would like you to taste the dish in front of you and suggest the best pairing from these wines. We have three minutes <coughs> for this. So uh, with this uh, quite rustical dish, uh, to be with, uh, with, uh, with beans, uh, my suggestion uh, will be the wine number three. Uh, I said about this wine that it's cava. Uh, the reason it's uh, it's uh, very easy. Uh, I think uh, the zucchini and uh, and the beans they are a bit uh, a bit fatty on its terms. And they need uh, a richer taste of the wine uh, to compare it. Uh, but uh, of course, also they don't need any sweetness or a very intensive flavor, uh, like uh, very sharp acidity, because uh, they destroy it. And uh, for me, the uh, uh, wine number three perfectly supported uh, when you taste it uh, and after drink the wine. It, uh, what came back? It's a very pleasant uh, taste, a very pleasant combination. Of those uh, of those uh, beans and uh, a, a bit of nuttiness of, uh, of the cava wine, and uh, together it works uh, very nice. Uh, so for me, wine number three it's uh, it's the wine that uh, works the most. Uh, I didn't try number one, number two uh, because I think number two is uh, a bit for a different dishes so with the residual sugar, and uh, number one it's a. Uh, very light uh, to be to be served with, uh, and uh, from three and four I prefer uh, number three because it's maybe also uh, thanks to the age of the wine, that it's uh, more rounded, it's uh, more measured, uh, and uh, it fits to the uh, the turkey turkey taste of, uh, of the beans with, uh, with the zucchini. So uh, a friend of mine said that uh, exceptional dishes has to be with exceptional wines, uh, but I think sometimes also the rustic process could be compared with the exceptional wines, so uh, I'm going to try uh, this uh, very nice uh, lunch for you. Yeah. Hi. Thank you very much. We have a last task for you as well. Now we would like you to identify these three beverages. You will have two minutes for this. So, uh, a bit complicated. I think uh, all of those three 
are uh, anise-based uh, eau de vie. Uh, so number one, eau de vie from uh, anise, number two, eau de wine from anise, and number three as well, uh, because the aroma is quite obvious. With wine number uh, wine, sorry, uh, with the beverage number one, uh, I think uh, there is a bit sweetness as well. So it reminds me of Sambuca, uh, the Italian product uh, made from the anise. Well, product number two, it's a bit higher in alcohol. Uh, so uh, Sambuca with the with the sugar added. Uh, a bit rounder, this is much sharper. It reminds me a bit uh, this year of uh, holiday in Greece, so probably uh, it will be Uzo. Uh, it's uh, also eau de vie uh, from the anise. Well, number three, it's a liqueur more than eau de vie because there is a very high sugar, uh, much more than, uh, than 100 grams. So uh, for sure this is not eau de vie, this is a liquor, but uh, the raw material it's, uh, it's uh, as well anise. Time. Thank you very much. You're done for now. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you.